Hello and welcome to the Argus Metal Movers podcast. Um, I'm here with John Walker from Tees Valley Lithium. I'm Tom Kavanagh and uh, let's get started. So John, if you could uh, give us a, a brief overview of the project Tees Valley Lithium. Yes, certainly, uh, Tom. So Tees Valley Lithium, we um, building a 96,000 tonne lithium hydroxide refinery um, in, in Teesside. Um, we announced our um, intentions to do this back in uh, February um, this year. Um, we're, we're looking at Wilton International Chemicals Park, plug and play chemicals park in the northeast. Lots of certified green energy there. Lots of big industrial um, companies have, have chosen this for their facility. Um, from our perspective, um, these are, are, are giving us um, uh, an accelerated uh, project. You know, we, our site benefits from um, green energy, um, demineralized water, um, processed water, um, steam, everything that we need for our, our processes is, is there. So um, this allows us to just rock up, build our facility, plug in our equipment, and away we go. So it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a really great location. It's leveraging the chemical heritage of the, the northeast of England. Um, and of course, with all the green energy that's available in, in this particular region as well, it's, it's, it's very um, uh, important to us. Um, we've set our facility up to be as flexible as possible, so we can accept um, lithium sulfate from spodumene, we can accept lithium carbonate from a, a brine or a mica source, and we can also accept lithium sulfate from battery recycling. Um, and we're one of the few facilities in the world that's capable of producing both lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate, so we can serve both the NMC chemistries and also the, uh, the LFP battery chemistries. And um, you're a subsidiary of, um, of Alchemy, right? That's correct. So we're a wholly owned subsidiary of um, Alchemy Capital Investments, um, who are on the London Stock Exchange and then the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Mm. Uh, why did you choose lithium sulfate as a primary processing feedstock? Well, for us, um, we saw the development of the European lithium industry as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reorganize the supply chain to make it um, robust, sustainable, and, and also so it didn't touch China. Um, this isn't because of any anti-Chinese sentiment. It's purely because China uh, today control 90% of the world's lithium market, and they need all of that lithium for their own decarbonization plans. So consequently, it means that Europe needs to build supply chains which are um, independent of, uh, you know, of China. Um, so while we were doing this, we were looking at uh, how do we uh, be as efficient and as low carbon as possible. And of course, you know, shipping spodumene, which is, has a, is I mean, it's SC6, which is 6% um, Li2O or 3% lithium. So if you're shipping it from Australia or South America or Canada or Africa to the UK, you're basically shipping 97% waste because it's only the 3% of lithium that's in it that you're going to use. So to us, we looked at the, the most economic way and the, the most low carbon way to concentrate it, which was then to say, okay, let's make lithium sulfate at the, as close as possible to the mine site as we can. Mm. Um, and then we're reducing our volume shipped by between 75 to 80%. Um, so consequently, from a carbon perspective and a logistics perspective, um, concentrating up to lithium sulfate makes a great deal of sense. That sulfate feed is going to come from the north of Australia, right, via which port? Correct. So we're looking to build a um, lithium sulfate facility at Port Hedland mm. in um, Western Australia. Um, port Hedland's the um, largest bulk export um, uh, port in Australia. Mm. Uh, and also it's a significant uh, container um, uh, export uh, location also. Um, it's also very in very close proximity to a lot of spodumene projects in, in Western Australia. So we have a lot of choice of companies that we can actually buy spodumene uh, for. Um, but we don't, uh, we, we can also accept a, you know, a technical grade lithium carbonate from South, you know, South America. That wouldn't be uh, uh, an issue for us. And also as the 
um, the various micro projects around the world come on online. Our sale to, uh, to them is very much, well, look, um, don't try and make an EV grade lithium carbonate straight off the bat. Um, just make a technical grade one and, and ship it to us. And then we'll, we'll do the following, uh, the, the final polishing steps and make the EV grade lithium hydroxide. So some of the brine projects, for example, in the UK or something, or, or Europe, they could potentially feed you as well? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've signed MOUs already with um, some of the UK-based brine um, uh, junior uh, miners. Um, and our, our intention will be at some point that, uh, to, that um, when it's technically and economically feasible, mm. then we'll, we'll look to use these, um, these sources for us. Okay. And you said you can you can produce lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate. Um, I wonder what do you think is the best option um, for Europe, uh, given the success of LFP in China, but then you've also got NCM capacity in Europe. So which product do you believe is is more um, more relevant and profitable? Yeah. So I think. I mean, it's horses for courses in this situation. I mean, if you want to, to eliminate range anxiety and you're, you're going to have a premium uh, vehicle, then you're going to use the NCM or NMC chemistries um, uh, for these batteries. That needs lithium hydroxide. Um, on the LFP side, um, you know, you, for smaller, cheaper vehicles, smaller batteries, um, uh, more kind of the budget range of the, of, of the spectrum, then LFP is, uh, is clearly the way that in that's going, and probably the same for stationary energy storage as well. Mm. Um, there are some technologies out there that um, make LFP chemistries, but they start with lithium hydroxide as well, mm. um, particularly the one developed by Johnson Matthey. Um, so this is also a, you know, another potential market for us. Um, I think most people at the moment are predicting roughly a 50-50 split for lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate um, demand in Europe. So if we consider uh, 2030 demand is forecast to be about 700,000 tonnes, lithium hydroxide market be about roughly 350,000 tonnes. So we would be um, at 96,000 tonnes of capacity. We'd be serving around 30% of that, uh, that market. OK. And, um, yeah, I mean, what, what percentage of your offtake could you shift to carbonate if you if you wanted to so for um, our balance is roughly 20 to 25 percent of our capacity we mm. can shift to produce um, lithium carbonate instead of lithium hydroxide and we'll just balance that depending on um, uh, you know what what the demand is in the um, in, in the market at that time sure so there's optionality going to be built into the refinery. yeah very much so I mean our our, our ethos has, has been you know um, build a very robust process mm. to allow multiple feeds um, to give a great flexibility in terms of where we're taking the lithium from. Set the facility up from day one to be able to accept recycled uh, material coming from um, battery scrap recycling initially and then in a, in a few years time end of life batteries as well. Um, so we're kind of future proofing our facility to, to be able to accept uh, um, multiple feeds and then also producing two end products to ensure that um, uh, we, we can flex as the, if the market changes. And you're, you're in the Wilton Chemical Park up in Teesside. Um, I mean, what, what are the, we've got other projects popping up in Teesside as well. Um, what are the benefits of being in that chemical park and Teesside as a whole for batteries? Sure, sure. So I think for us, what attracted us was very much the plug and play nature of, of, of Wilton itself, because the infrastructure is all there and in place. We're, we're not having to, to wait for sites to be cleared and infrastructure to be installed. It's, it's, it's there today. So that's uh, key for us. We've got there's plenty of um, certified green energy available for us to, um, to, uh, to use. I mean, we've developed an electrochemical process. So we're replacing um, chemicals uh, with high carbon footprints with green energy mm. so it's important for us from a carbon perspective that you know we have that certified green energy um, uh, available mm. um, the other great thing about the northeast you know you have the it, it's chemical heritage so you have a 
a high degree of um, talented workforce with the, with the right experience and qualifications. Um, labour rates in the region compare very, very well to not only to other parts of the UK, but other, uh, other locations where we've um, looked at in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, you've got the Europe's largest um, industrial development site at Teesside, over 4,000 acres of, uh, of land being developed. So once we, uh, once we build our facility, of course, we want cathode active material producers and, and, uh, and gigafactories, etc., cetera, to, to, to co-locate or near us in, in Teesside. So having that space there is also very important to the development of the, the supply chain in the northeast of, uh, of England. Yeah, and we've seen some of those uh, you know, gigafactories that have been popping up in Vision, British Vault. Um, I think in recent months there has been some turbulence with some of these projects. Um, how have the m most recent few months uh, in the UK and, and the events in the UK economy changed investors' outlook when it comes to some of these battery projects? Yeah, it's a good uh, good question, Tom. I mean, the the need for to decarbonize um, through electrification uh, is 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 a non-negotiable item. I think with every consumer in the world now has uh, has embraced the fact that we need to decar decarbonize, or at least the majority of, uh, of of people have. You know, so um, in order to do that, you you're going to have to have uh, you're going to convert the transport system to being electrified and away from fossil fuels, and you've got to find a way of balancing the generation of renewable energy with our demand patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and everything, the two things which are, or the one thing that's constant between those two things is the lithium-ion battery. You know, it is it is the technology um, for electric vehicles. You know, it's it's the most popular technology for stationary energy storage, although there are some alternatives on the, uh, on the, on the uh, stationary energy storage side. So for us, you've got to look at the fundamentals. The big mega trend is, is uh, decarbonisation through electrification, which means you've got to have batteries. So for us, while we might see some temporary turmoil in, in the market, which is, I don't think, unexpected given the, what, what the world has, has been through with, um, over the last couple of years, um, fundamentally, batteries are here and they're here to stay, and batteries need lithium. Uh, it's interesting that um, you've chosen to work with Traxxas. Um, I, I mean, what do they, as a, as a big trading company, what are they bringing to the table for your for your project? Yeah, so I mean, um, building you know the, the the first and largest lithium hydroxide refinery in Europe is is a real challenge. You know, and we've. We've chosen very carefully our strategic partners um, to do this. So we have Wave International on the engineering side, as, as an example. Um, Wave have, have built um, lithium refineries. Um, they've worked on countless lithium projects over the past, uh, past 20 years and are, and are a big part of our um, uh, team. Traxxas is, is the same. You know, I mean, this is a large um, trading house um, they're, they're able to uh, uh, get a, a very global coverage. Um, you know, they're assisting us with, uh, as, as we've said, with um, sourcing material for, uh, for, our, for our project in, uh, in Wilton. That doesn't mean that we're not talking to the junior miners. We, clearly we are, um, and, and we'll continue to, uh, to, to, to do that. But, you know, Traxxas are, are bringing us, you know, economies of scales, speed, size, uh, advantages, which as a startup company, uh, we have to be very careful where we, where we put our resources and we don't spread ourselves too thin. So having these strategic partners is, is really important to us. Sure. And maybe last question, a um, bit more of a light um, question. I mean, what's your personal connection to lithium? Yeah, so from my, from my, from my perspective, uh, you know, I've, uh, so firstly, I'm, I'm Cornish. So uh, uh, in, in, in the UK, um, I, I live in the mining district in Cornwall. I can see the lithium mining, potential mining projects from, from my spare bedroom window, so I'm, I'm right in the industry. 
I have worked in the um, uh, the with the lithium with with the lithium project in Cornwall as well. Um, I spent uh, more than twenty years working for uh, for Imeris as well, who's the who's the land and mineral rights owner of uh, of lithium in Cornwall. Um, worked on a number of different projects around the world: spodumene in North America, um, um, lithium brine projects in uh, you know in Argentina. Um, you know, my, my, I've got family living in the Lithium Triangle in, uh, in, in South America, and I'm, I'm currently building a house in Salta. So uh, from, from my perspective, it's, you know, Lithium is, uh, is, is, has become a big part of my life over the last few years. And you know, trying now to, um, to support development of Lithium activities in the northeast of England, you know, supporting UK automotive, um, and then hopefully in the future um, being able to um, you know, to uh, um, work more extensively in this, this industry with, within the UK as well, I think would be a great thing to do. Um, you, 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 there's, there's lots of publicity about uh, the fact that you have a number of lithium resources in the UK. Uh, it would be nice to be, you know, to help these regions develop and then when it's technically and economically feasible to actually source lithium closer to home rather than having to bring it in from from uh, overseas. So, lithium through and through. Yep, That's definitely. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, John. Um, and thanks for listening to uh, the podcast and watching us here. Um, please visit argusmedia.com if you want any more. Uh, I'm Tom Kavanagh, and thanks for watching.